Hello, we're glad you've joined us today. My name is Field and Allison, and Jen and I have been married since 1969. We have five children and 22 grandchildren. We've lived in Africa since 1972. We've begun a ministry called Africa Institute of Marriage and Family. We travel across the African continent teaching people how to have strong marriages and stable families. We're so happy that you're joining us. We're looking at different questions people ask us about marriage. Janet, what's our question today? Our question for today is an issue that troubles many couples. We are sometimes asked, is it wrong for a wife to refuse to have sex with her husband? This idea comes from a passage found in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. And there we read, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but he yields it to the wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. We see in verse 4 that men have certain needs, as we all know, and that their wives are supposed to meet those needs. But we see in verse 5 that they could refrain from meeting those needs if they have decided together to practice a time of fasting from sex in order to focus on prayer for a period of time. That's actually the only reason we see in the scriptures that we can refuse to practice sex. However, we all know of other reasons that we are permitted to refrain from having sex. One of those times is when the wife is on her monthly cycle or her period. I think that both the husband and the wife would agree that this would not be a good time to have sex. What about when she's sick? Yes, I'm sure the wife can be excused when she's sick. However, she needs to be honest. Sometimes women say something like, don't bother me tonight, I have a headache. Or even, I'm too tired tonight, leave me alone. When she uses excuses like these, often a man gets frustrated. Yes, we women do make excuses sometimes, and this is not good. We need to remember that a man's desire for sex is very strong. And his wife is his only legitimate way to have sex. That's right, yeah. We want our husbands to be faithful, but we fail to meet his need. This is not fair. You know, I find that even if I have a headache or if I'm tired, having sex can energize me, even sometimes relieve my headache. That coming together as one can be very satisfying for both of us. You know, I've really always appreciated your willingness to have sex, even maybe when you don't really feel like it. Let us read again in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3, where it says, The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. We see here that, yes, men have sexual needs. But in the very same verse, we're told that the women also have mm -hmm. sexual needs that the husband mm -hmm. is to fulfill. Yes, women do have strong sexual urges, especially at certain times of the month. And even occasionally, we may find a wife having a stronger sexual desire than her husband has. However, it is more common to find that the husband has stronger sexual feelings and more frequently than his wife does. When one desires sex more often than the other, how can they meet each other's needs without frustrating each other? Yeah, this passage of Scripture that we read teaches us that we have to help each other mm -hmm. and try to satisfy each other to the best mm -hmm. of our abilities. In order to do this, a couple needs to learn mm -hmm. to communicate openly about their sexual feelings. Yes. A man might say that he would like to have sex every day. Then his wife might explain, for me, I cannot really enjoy sex that often. For me, once a week would be enough. These sexual urges that we feel are regulated by hormones in our blood. When a person has an orgasm during intercourse, these hormones are released. The word orgasm is actually that intense pleasure that you feel when you have sexual fulfillment. 
it takes two or three days for them to build up again to the level that a person can enjoy a sexual encounter again to the maximum level. This is not only true of women. If a man refrains from having sex for more than two days, he will find that when he has sex again, it will be an even more intense, much more satisfying experience. Therefore, when a man agrees with his wife to space these sexual encounters, he will also benefit. And women can also learn to accommodate their husband's need for more frequent sex, even when she's not feeling like having sex. It's all about compromise. Sometimes the wife can agree to have sex when she is not ready for it, and sometimes the husband can give her a break from sex. Both partners need to be willing to give up something. Sometimes I may not be in the mood, but I understand your need, and so I may agree. This is especially true now that I'm older. I'm glad you mentioned getting older. Some people believe that a woman can no longer have sex when she reaches the age of menopause. How is it that you have been able to continue being sexually active even though you have reached menopause? For me, it is the memory of past sexual experiences. You have always made sex such a satisfying thing for me, so that even if I'm not feeling sexual desire, when you approach me, I know that not only is it going to feel good, but it is going to be incredible. I think what discourages some women is a foul smell they may have acquired. This is not normal. Basic cleanliness should take care of it. If the odor continues, she needs to see a doctor. There may be something wrong. Having regular sex increases the health of a woman. Thanks for that advice. I've also heard that many women are afraid to have sex when they're pregnant. Janet, is there any truth to the old wives' tale that it is harmful to have sex when the wife is pregnant? That is a good way to describe that myth, an old wives' tale. I hope that none of our viewers still believe that. Having sex is a safe and healthy practice for at least eight months of pregnancy, unless there are some complications with the pregnancy. Having that marital oneness brings benefits to the father, the mother, and the child. It definitely brings benefits. Leaving a man for nine months with no sex is a very risky thing. He will be greatly tempted. The First Corinthians passage that we read is relevant here. We can say that it is wrong, unless ordered by a doctor in unusual circumstances, for a wife to refuse to have sex with her husband just because she is pregnant, or she has reached menopause. Mm -hmm. I had a friend whose wife told him when she reached menopause, I'll stay with you, I'll cook your meals, but do not expect me to sleep with you anymore. All I ever got out of sex was children, and now that I cannot have any more children, do not call me again. Hey, that is very wrong. However, I think I can see the problem. She said she never got anything from sex except children. That's a clue that she was probably not getting pleasure from their sexual experience. It is the man's responsibility to make sure that his wife also receives pleasure. Yes, when we, when we look back at the passage in 1 Corinthians 7, verses 3 and 4, we see it is not a one-way street. Yes, the wife is to give her husband sexual satisfaction. However, it also teaches us that the husband must make sure that his wife is reaching sexual satisfaction. Mm -hmm. As we saw in the earlier story, it is to the man's benefit later in life to ensure that his wife is fully satisfied when she's young. What men need to understand is that it usually takes a woman longer than it does a man to have a sexual orgasm. The husband needs to take the time to stimulate his wife's erotic regions. When she is properly stimulated, she can become very active and excited. Yeah, the husband needs to be attentive and aware of his wife's moods. He will get better at this with practice. The wife should not expect perfection the first time. She needs to be patient with him, even teach him. Yeah. The husband should ask his wife what gives her pleasure and then listen when she tells him and then begin to do those things. Again, learning how to give each other pleasure is based on good communication. The husband should also pay 
special attention to his wife's body language. She will tell him what she likes by her reaction to his touch. Mm -hmm. But it is a two-way street. The wife needs also to learn what gives her husband more pleasure and then do those things. Yes, communication is a key to good sex. Men, if your wife likes for you to stroke her breasts, then stroke her breasts. If she likes for you to rub her legs, then rub her legs. Be especially attentive to her genital areas. You'll find that as she gets aroused, you will also be more aroused. Don't shortchange her. Yes, it will take more time, but it is well spent. You will both get immense pleasure as you truly become one. I have had women sometimes ask if there are some things that are prohibited for a man and his wife to do when they are engaging in sex. Field, and how would you answer that question? The only thing that Scripture prohibits is when one of the partners goes outside of the marriage and commits adultery. That is why this discussion is so important. They must keep each other satisfied within the marriage. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2, we read, But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his wife, and each woman with her own husband. We see that these instructions about sex are given so that neither the husband nor the wife is tempted to go outside marriage to have sex with someone else. So, a couple can do whatever gives them pleasure. There is nothing specifically prohibited in Scripture. But you should never force your partner to do something he or she is not comfortable doing. If you both agree that you want to do a certain thing, then you are free to do it. But if one does not agree, then you should leave it. There are two reasons given in Scripture for having sex. The first one is to produce children. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, right in the beginning, God said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And the second is for pleasure. As we've seen from the scripture that we've been looking at in 1 Corinthians 7, as long as something is pleasurable for both partners, then they are free to engage in that activity. It is obvious that sex is not only to produce children. Often there is no possibility of getting pregnant when you have sex. A woman only has three or four days of the month on which she could get pregnant. Yet we continue to have sex the entire month or when the wife is already pregnant or is in menopause. Yes, humans are the only creatures that continue to have sex throughout. In the animal kingdom, the different species have cycles and special ways of alerting each other that they are fertile. And this is the only time that they engage in procreative sexual activity. It is thought that some monkeys have sex more often, but most animals do not. In the human species, it is apparent that sex serves other important functions. Even now that I'm older, as I said, the memory of that special closeness and pleasure triggers a willingness to continue in sexual activities. And you know, sex brings us closer together. It actually brings us into a special oneness. As we give pleasure to one another, we grow closer and develop a real special bond together. After engaging in sex, we have a warm glow. We feel totally relaxed and at peace. The sexual relationship can serve as an instrument to gauge the marital relationship, actually. That is right. If a couple's sexual relationship is good, that usually indicates that the marital relationship is also good. But if their sexual relationship is troubled, that shows that probably There are some other things wrong with this marriage. They need to talk about it. When a married couple goes for a long time without having sex together, it is a dangerous situation. As 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 5 says, it is giving Satan an opportunity to destroy that marriage. In Ephesians 4 and verse 26, Paul gives us some good advice. There he says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. This shows us that it is very important to settle problems quickly. This verse advises us to settle things before the sun goes down. 
It is a good thing to set a policy never to go to bed angry. When we first got married, I used to think that when we had some tension or problem between us, if I could just go to sleep, then tomorrow the trouble would be finished. However, the next morning, that issue would be the first thing on my mind when I woke up. And then everything else that you did that day made me more and more irritated. So then you learn to talk things out before going to bed. I can remember during those first years of being married, I would sometimes wake you up in the middle of the night when I knew that there was something we needed to talk about. I soon came to realize that I was not going to sleep well if we did not settle a problem before going to bed. Sometimes our discussion would continue late into the night, but when we finally settled our problem, then we both slept in peace afterward. Another thing we need to mention on the issue of not refusing sex is that the couple needs to stay together in order to be able to keep each other satisfied. I have seen too many marriages broken apart because the husband left home to get a job somewhere. That is a very dangerous thing for a marriage. A husband and wife should stay together all the time. Well, thank you for that word of wisdom. Our question was, is it a sin for a wife to refuse to have sex with her husband? Let us remember that it works both ways. It is just as wrong for a husband to deprive his wife of sex. He is definitely doing this when he leaves home to go get work somewhere else. Mm -hmm. If he needs the job, then he should take his wife with him. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the wife needing to accommodate her husband sexually, and we have discussed how a husband is also to give pleasure to his wife. If he refuses to give his wife sexual fulfillment, then he is sinning. Mm -hmm. Sex is all about loving each other giving of oneself to satisfy the needs of the other. When we focus on self and refuse to satisfy or to give pleasure to the other, then it becomes sin. Selfishness brings destruction to a marriage, whether it is the wife or the husband. I know that for me, if I see that you're not enjoying our sexual interaction for some reason, then I do not enjoy it either. It spoils it for me as well. But we also need to remember that from time to time, a sexual experience may not work out well for the satisfaction of both. That is when we need to be forgiving, understanding, and keep trying. If both are focused upon pleasing the other, then things will be good eventually. Remember, practice makes perfect. So as Janet said, do not give up. Mm -hmm. Keep communicating and stay sexually active together. As we've grown older, sex has become more and more fulfilling for both of us. I enjoy taking the extra time to give you pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, you have learned your lesson well. Sex has also become extremely pleasurable for me as we have matured. May you, our viewers, also be blessed with a strong sexual relationship with your spouse. If you have any questions about this lesson or any other topic related to marriage and the family, please send us an email to our Africa Institute of Marriage and Family at aimfradio at gmail.com. Thank you for joining us for this vital study. Mm -hmm.